Well, well, this is my final for Theater 2. I'm going to be talking about Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid was directed by George Roy Hill and stars Paul Newman, Robert Redford, and Catherine Ross. I'm going to be talking mostly about the mise-en-scene of the film and how it compares to the classic Western mise-en-scene, the more stereotypical of the 50s. Uh, so, mostly, the film starts off seeming to be more like a classic Western. I mean, it even pays homage to the great train robbery with the, the sepia intro and the film strip, uh, the, the train robbery that goes wrong. But many times it deviates, like scenes like where they play Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, which you would not associate with a Western. Especially, you wouldn't imagine that it would be written for one, even though that song was written for this movie. The setting and how the setting changes is also very interesting, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, because it starts off very traditional Western. You get the grand vistas, and you see the waterfalls and mountain ranges, and they go to a small saloon in a, in a small one-horse town. But as the story progresses, so does the setting, and it... it changes in a actually really odd way for westerns they they go to the east coast and they go to coney island and they play carnival games on coney island in this great montage scene and they take a ferry down to bolivia so the film actually uses a, a montage and the changing of the setting to progress the story a fairly major difference between butch casting the sundance kid and a classic western is it has a far more spaghetti western feel to it uh, spaghetti westerns were films popularized by directors like sergio leone which had a far more dirty feel to them, more gritty, felt realer, as opposed to the impeccable hero who always dressed in white and was always clean cut, like Shane or High Noon. Which brings up another point that the characters, the main characters, are anti-heroes. They are the, the bad guys who get shot dead or run out of town at the end of movies like Shane or High Noon. They actually play with the idea of the anti-hero and the hero in Butch Casting the Sundance Kid. Uh, they mentioned one of the characters chasing them, the floors, is always recognized by his white hat, which is like the ultimate symbol of a good guy in a Western film. The characters from their perspective, he sounds far more of a villain, but not just a villain, a, an unstoppable force that will be behind them no matter what, always waiting for them to make a mistake. And even their sheriff friend mentions that, that it's not how they're going to die, it's when, and it'll no doubt be bloody. And that's definitely a motif in Westerns that the law and civilization is always catching up and will be there inevitably. It's just a matter of time. And I think the film really sums up this classic Western theme that civilization's coming up and they don't get away with their crimes. They don't actually get hunted down by the posse that was coming for them. Instead, they get shot down by the army, uh, an orderly unit, this very idea of civilization finally catching up to them. And I think that's a perfect way that to end the movie. Uh, thanks for watching my blog.